Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Let me start over. Welcome to the Emmy Award winning Late Show. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Because on Sunday night, the talented staff and crew of this show won an Emmy for our live election special. Stephen Colbert's Election Night 2020, Democracy's Last Stand, Building Back America, Great Again, Better 2020. This is, this is absolutely true. My research department says, as far as they can tell, it's the longest title ever to win a primetime Emmy. Yeah. The only thing longer was the acceptance speech by the director of the Queen's Gambit. <laughs> this award, yeah. this award yeah. belongs to everyone who makes this show happen. And yeah. congratulations, yeah. Congratu yeah. congratulations. Yeah. And I want to thank all of them, especially the sweet, gangly weirdo who crashed the stage. See if you can spot him. And the Emmy for Variety Special Live goes to Stephen Colbert's Election Night 2020. Yes! It's true. It's true. I can now... I can now reveal that Conan O'Brien has been one of my writers for the last 15 years. <laughs> Couldn't say anything because of the different networks. Thank you for everything you've done, Conan. But sadly, today, I had to let Conan go. Uh, <laughs> after a year of COVID, CBS is tightening budgets, and we pay our writers by the foot. And... <laughs> While I was up there, I tried to squeeze in all my thank yous, but the Academy tried to play me off twice, okay? Uh, in my defense, this ear doesn't hear anything. And this ear only hears what it wants to. <laughs> and keep in mind, to win this Emmy, we beat the Oscars, the Grammys, the Super Bowl halftime show, and Biden's inauguration special. <laughs> so technically... Our election show beat the actual election. <laughs> I believe that means I get to appoint one Supreme Court justice. I get to appoint one Supreme Court justice. Yeah. Dolly Parton? No, no. Kermit? Ruffins? Mm -hmm. Conan. He's available. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now that I know that live election shows bring in the sweet, sweet Hollywood gold, I'm announcing my 2021 Canadian election moustacular <laughs> featuring our cartoon prime minister and Saskatooning out the news. When is that? When is that happening? And I'm being told that the Canadian election was last night, so <laughs> we'll have to save the special till next month when a mob of fascist beavers storm the parliament building. <laughs> now, folks, winning this Emmy was a, a great way to take my mind off the fact that our democracy is in deep trouble. And I know that thanks to my guests tonight, Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. <laughs> or, as I'm calling them, Bobbert Codward. <laughs> They've written a truly upsetting new tell-all about the last days of the previous administration called Peril. After reading the book, I think the title isn't strong enough. I suggest renaming it... Ah! <laughs> now, don't tell the authors, but I haven't finished reading... Because ah! I had to stop reading it to keep yelling... Ah! <laughs> Peril is full of things you wish you didn't need to know, like that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was worried the ex-president might launch a nuclear strike to distract from the election, that our democracy was saved by Dan Quayle, and that the former president's legal team laid out a six-step plan for Vice President Mike Pence to overturn the election. 
Yeah, it's disturbing, but it's easy to see why they gave the job to Pence. Everyone knows the former president has a hard time taking six steps. <laughs> now, I read it. I've, 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 I've read it, and this, this, this blueprint for a fascist coup was written by disgraced former law professor and inventor of the side toupee, John Eastman. <laughs> this Eastman fella told Pence that on January 6th, he could overturn the election results by throwing out electors from seven states. Seven states, that's 15% of the states. <laughs> Though it does say in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, Offer not valid in Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico. Here's how. Here's how Eastman's evil plan was supposed to work. Pence would throw out those seven states' electoral votes because they allegedly had competing electors. In fact, no state had actually put forward an alternate slate of electors. They were merely the former president's allies claiming without any authority to be electors. I can be an elector, Dad! <laughs> I, I hear my name, you King President Dad II. <laughs> now can we play catch? <laughs> now, with, with those... Next year, next year acting. With those states out of the mix, Pence would have declared the former president the winner with more electoral college votes at 232 votes to 222. Eastman predicted that action would receive howls, of course, from the Democrats. Yes, in fact, it reminds me of Allen Ginsberg's howl. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness and some douchebag named John Eastman. <laughs> now, per the plan, per the plan, Pence would then say that no candidate had reached 270 votes in the Electoral College and throw the election to the House of Representatives where a majority would vote for the former president to win the election because at the time, Republicans controlled 26 of the state delegations, the bare majority needed to win that vote. That's not winning an election. That's grabbing power by a pussy. <laughs> but when you're a Republican, they let you do it. The conspirators were confident in the plan with one caveat. The main thing here is that Pence should do this without asking for permission, either from a vote of the joint session or from the court. Now, luckily, Mike Pence can't do anything without asking permission. <laughs> Mother, I know this is controversial, but may I please put ice in my water? <laughs> I understand there's a chance it'll make my tummy pregnant. <laughs> Here's the disturbing detail. The night before the riot, the former president opened a door near the Resolute desk so he could hear his people. He left the door open, the muffled soundtrack of excited screams and yells from his supporters filling the room. That is some serious dictator energy. But listening to a fascist mob is the only way that guy can fall asleep. In fact, on his nightstand, he has a white power noise machine. <laughs> Heil slumber. <laughs> Today, sure, sure, why not? Everybody loves a good night's sleep. Now, today, Woodward and Costa appeared on Coffee Joe Morning in the Morning Brew Crew. And Woodward said this about that moment. It reminded me of Nixon talking to the pictures of former presidents on the wall at, at a moment uh, as Watergate was cracking uh, open and cracking his presidency. And the equivalent is that Trump isn't talking to George Washington or Abraham Lincoln like Nixon was. He's talking to this mob. And is this true? I'm being told we've just received a statement from the ghost of Richard Nixon. Hey, Bob, I made you famous. How are you going to do me like that? I'm nothing like that guy. I created the EPA, and this is my real hair. In summation, <laughs> luckily, wow, wow, the ghost, the ghost of Richard Nixon. Oh,
<laughs> Luckily, the former president's legal team did not count on one thing, some Republicans caring if the United States continues. Like Utah Senator Mike Lee, who said of plans to try and overturn the results in individual states, you might as well make your case to Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> okay, let's ask her, Your Majesty, can they present their case to you? No one wants to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> Thankfully, if you want to see a functioning democracy, just look north, because yesterday, with very little drama, Canadians re-elected Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Trudeau called the election back in August in hopes of getting a majority in Parliament, which led to a 36-day campaign, as opposed to our 2020 campaign, which started in 2017 <laughs> and will last until the My Pillow guy is strapped to a rocket and fired into the heart of the sun. <laughs> and I got a, I got a, I got a thing. I got a thing. I got a thing. You got a thing? I think you know what the thing is? I think you know what the thing is? And unlike the $14 billion America just poured down the election hole, this campaign cost Canada $600 million. And those are Canadian dollars. <laughs> which are more fun to use because none of the mooses on their money ever owned slaves. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are the authors of Carol.